Welcome to the Sellernomics Podcast, where we share valuable tips and information in the Amazon and e-commerce space. Each week, we deliver the best interviews with some of the top Amazon personalities in the industry to help you grow your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. And now, here are your hosts, Rob Stanley and Lisa Kinski. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of Sellernomics. My name is Lisa Kinski, and I'm joined by my co-host, Rob Stanley. And we have a very exciting guest for you guys today, very well known in the industry. Uh, doesn't need much of an introduction, but we have Mike Jackness with us from Ecom Crew. Mike, how are you? Hello. I'm a, a little bit sick. Hopefully, we'll get through this today without any coughing or sneezing fits, but I'm, I'm doing way better than I was a few days ago. Oh, that's good. On the mend then. Did you, hopefully you didn't pick it up on like any kind of travels or anything. Well, I don't know. It's not really great to pick up anything, but. Well, I I live in Las Vegas, so everybody travels with their germs to me. Oh, Uh. yes. Gosh, that stinks. (laughs) Hate that. Well, Mike, thank you for being here. And you guys today, we're going to be talking about email marketing, how you can master that to grow your e-com business and really just boosting your external traffic through email and, and a couple of other avenues. So, um, definitely something that you have a lot of experience in Mike and and we're very happy to have you here. So Rob, I'll let you kick us off. Yeah. It's just a quick one. Everybody, Mike is absolutely amazing uh, when it comes just to the entire realm of e-commerce. So if you have any questions to ask, please feel free to drop those in the comments section. We'll make sure Mike gets those uh, answered uh, even if it's after the show's over. Uh, But Mike, let's kick it off with, uh, you know, email marketing has been around a very long time and it goes way back to, you know, probably AOL and getting started type of thing. But, uh, you know, is that still viable today? I mean, there's so many, you know, new tips and tricks out there uh, to help all these Amazon and e-commerce sellers. But uh, is email marketing still one of those things that help drive uh, sales and traffic? Yeah, it's (laughs) no one's more surprised than me when it comes to this, because I always think of things in terms of me first. Right. And so for me personally, I hate email. Like, I mean, it is, it is the worst part of my day. I get up every morning, have a cup of coffee, like, and then kind of like get into email and my email box is like whack-a-mole. The first thing I do is spend half my time just deleting all the crap out of there and just getting it down to the things that I actually wanted to respond to or need to respond to. And I use uh, a third party app now that helps with this and it's made it a lot better, but even still, uh, you know, 30 to 60 minutes of my day is just delete, block, delete, block, you know, you know, and, and trying to train the software to just do a better and better job of getting out all the crap. And then the things that aren't crap and the things I do need to respond to, a lot of them are like things that are just annoyances. Like, hey, I just need five minutes of your time. Like everybody just needs five minutes of your time or they're trying to sell you something or whatever it might be. And so as a business owner and, you know, kind of a public figure, email for me is is just miserable. And it's been this way for a long time. I mean, I, I quit my job almost 20 years ago. Um, and, and email has been, has been awful like this entire time, but somewhere along the way, I realized that I am kind of the minority. Like if you don't own a business and you are just kind of the average consumer, most people enjoy getting email. Like they enjoy signing up for a newsletter or communicating with people that, that they have an interest in and they're not spending all day long, uh, you know, trying to get through their inbox. And I finally kind of came around to this and it was probably around 2014. We were running uh, treadmill.com at the time and decided to start building an email list. Uh, but we really started focusing on this in 2016. Like when I really just like decided to just double down on this was in, in 2016 when we owned color it and really built uh, a, a very valuable resource in, in our email list. And you know, the way that we know that it's working is our open rates are like 40%, which is almost triple the industry average. Yeah. And every time we send an email out, it produces sales. And so uh, you, we can kind of get into the nitty gritty, but uh, you know, the, the original question is, is email marketing dead? I would say no. And, and just because it might be a, a nuisance in your life, again, it's not a nuisance in everyone else's life. Mm. And, shockingly, you know, it's like the one constant, right? I mean, like this comes and goes and that comes and goes, and this is like a new tip and trick. And, 
But like email continues to be this thing that has just persevered through all of that, like through Yahoo originally, like in Yahoo ads and Google and Google ads and Google search and Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok, like all these things are constantly coming and going, like different platforms for e-commerce have come and gone through all this time and all these different things. But email is still there. And obviously, like the world is constantly changing, but it's hard to see any, you know, future world where email just goes away, right? I mean, like in, in the near term, in, in future, in, in technologies, five years, let's say three years, whatever. But you, know, you can see a, a world where search is going to get way different and ads are going to get way different. And, um, you know, just e-commerce in general is going to be very different. But is email going to go away? Probably not. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think even if, uh, is it Elon Musk who wants the Neuralink thing? Even if he has his way, it's still going to be right. connected to your Gmail and you're going to open it through through that. Um, so, but when we talk about email marketing, I know that there's, it's, it's difficult for Amazon sellers specifically to reach their clientele through yeah. email because Amazon really owns that relationship. So talk to us a little bit about how Amazon sellers can, well, maybe e-com sellers and Amazon sellers on both sides of the spectrum, how they can leverage email marketing to increase their sales or just visibility of their brand even. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, again, starting with color, it just really worked on how do we get people on some sort of a list that we can then communicate with them over a longer period of time. And so I think every brand is different. I'll walk through several different examples of things that we've done. Um, and I, you know, again, I think you can't just take a, a template. Mike Jackness has done this. I'm just going to go do this exact thing. Cause I think every business is a little bit nuanced, right? You have a mm -hmm. different kind of a little bit different appeal, different price point. Is it consumable or not? Uh, what kind of ad groups are there on Facebook that you can target? So there's just a bunch of different things, but I'll start with color and walk through uh, several examples. Um, the first is kind of like the, you know, add to email kind of flow, right? And so like you have, something that you can run a Facebook ad, an Instagram ad, a TikTok ad, whatever it might be, and convince people to sign up for your email. Mm -hmm. And so for color, that was very easy to do because that particular brand was able to offer something that was downloadable that had value, you know, basically coloring pages, right? We can design these coloring pages. People can download them as a PDF, print them out, and then color them on regular paper at home. And then over time, we could convince them why they should try our paper and our books or our mediums. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes it took six, 12, even 18 months to convert somebody into a, a paying customer. But again, they would open up all of our emails because they were always getting something of value from us. And that's probably the biggest thing to take away from this entire episode that we're going to talk about today. Uh, the average company spends all their time email marketing about themselves you know, me, me, yeah. me, 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 you know, buy, 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 sell, 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 yeah. sell, sell. Nobody wants that crap, right? I mean, like, I don't need to know about your new product or that you have a Mother's Day sale or, you know, there, there's whatever. I mean, it's just, it's constantly, that's all they communicate versus when we are doing email marketing, that's like the vast minority. Like we kind of sneak that in every now and then. Mm -hmm. And all the other emails are like, here's something for free. Here's some tips and tricks about like how you can color or like, here's, 10 other people that have used this coloring page and here's what they've done with it from the community. You know, so you're, we're getting people that are, that are reading a list to like then want to provide us with user generated content and just like really fuel this pipeline of building our brand equity, getting people to open up our emails, giving them something for free and of value. And then eventually, okay, we have a new book out and we send, Hey, look, you know, you can pre-order this book. You can be among the first to get it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a black Friday sale, whatever, but, the vast majority of what we send out for everything that we do uh, is this is this value first kind of concept. Mm -hmm. And so, again, every brand's different, but for color it, Facebook has a, a well. This this is going back to at least the 2019 when, when we sold the business, so it might have changed since then. But uh, there's a one million person audience. You, know, you can go through and pick who you want to advertise to. And coloring books was. A specific audience. I could advertise to people who had an interest in coloring books and offer them these free downloads. And we also ran other uh, ideas as well, but it was very economical for us to get somebody on our email list for under a dollar and then communicate with them over a long period of time. And the chances were 
we would eventually get them to, to buy from us, mm -hmm. whether they saw some new product that they liked or they were finally convinced. So they just felt greedy for getting all this stuff for free from us. We've actually got those responses or um, it was, you know, the black Friday sale that they just couldn't resist or whatever it is over time, they eventually convert. So that was a very economical way to do it. Um, but conversely, we have uh, a tactical brand, uh, which actually is recording this uh, episode. I literally just sold today. So it's an interesting, uh, wow. <laughs> it was an interesting uh, development. I wasn't actually planning on that. Someone just randomly emailed me over the weekend and it just happened quickly. Um, but, um, good luck trying to get people to, to get on your list for those types of products with those types of ads. Right. And so we had to take a totally different approach there and start up a blog and took the long haul approach of let's now SEO very top of funnel stuff, get people to our site and offer some thing on our website that gets them into our flow, you know, so we're trying to convert two to 3% of our traffic uh, into a flow. I mean, Ecom crew, this is outside of e-commerce does the exact same thing. I mean, Ecom crew has been around for eight years now and gets over a million page views a year. And we're trying to convert X number of people to get on our list. And eventually, and again, we're, the emails are all highly valuable. Like we're, we're trying to deliver them valuable content of what's happening in the industry. Like here's some new tip and trick. Like here's something that Amazon just did that you need to be aware of. And every now and then when we open up uh, our registration for our premium product, that email goes out. So that's the vast minority. Same thing with tactical. I mean, everything that goes out is, you know, here's how to, uh, you know, prep for a hurricane or for like the zombie apocalypse or whatever it might be. Uh, Cause it's, it's a basically a prepping site. Uh, and every now and then when we launch a new product, then we email it to our list. And that kind of gets to your other question uh, of how you can use that list to then drive sales on Amazon, which I'll take a break. I've been rambling, but uh, that's kind of the, the idea of how it all comes together. No, no, this has been perfect. I, I, I think kind of the biggest takeaway is like that value add, right? Be sure that you're giving folks stuff that they're actually going to be interested in, not just sending you, you know, sale after sale. I, I have a couple of brands that I follow and I was thinking back in my emails and text messages. I'm, I'm in their text message uh, list as well. And I'm like, all I get from them is, you know, Mother's Day sale, Labor Day sale, Black Friday. Yep. We have a new drop. You know, I never see yep. anything else like that. Rob, do you see any brands leveraging like that value first? Yeah, strategy? very few. Very few. I mean, th there's occasionally ones that I've subscribed to that you get information from, but you know, a lot of the branded ones are just product, 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 sale, sell, sell, right? Which mm -hmm. is fine. You know, when it's your time to go buy something from them, you want that coupon code or that sale Price. happening, but it, it always seems to not happen when I go buy it though. Yeah. So actually, uh, I, I'm gonna, I want to take a quick break, but when we come back though, um, I want to talk to Mike a little bit about you know what's not covered a lot is when is the right time, either of the day, the month, or the hour to send some of these email marketing out. And Mike's probably got a lot of experience and probably seen what's more effective. Let's cover that when we come back from this uh, message from our sponsor. All right. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah. So welcome back, everybody. So we're talking to Mike Jackness of Ecom Crew, and we're talking about email marketing and external traffic and all that. And so I did have a good one for Mike uh, that, uh, you know, he's got a lot of experience in email marketing. He's been doing this a long time. And a lot of people don't really talk too much about, you know, when is the right time to send these emails, either day of the month or day of the week, and maybe even time, uh, actual hours of the day. And, and I'm sure it might vary, but Mike, what, what have you noticed over the years of doing, you know, all these email marketing campaigns, um, what works best? Yeah, that's a great question actually, because we've seen some pretty consistent uh, info here. Uh, so usually Tuesday or Wednesday uh, is the best day of the week. Uh, Fridays are awful. You know, people are just kind of like taking off for the weekend. The weekends are awful because they're out for the weekend. Mondays are bad because they're just getting back. Uh, and so we see this consistently. We we used to to test this at you know at, at, a, at a crazy scale because Clavio lets you do that, and uh, that's always what we've used to to do our our testing. Um, and so Tuesday, Wednesdays, always if we're going to be on a once a week cycle, which 
some of our brands, that's what we do. I'll, I'll get into this in just a second. But uh, if your cadence is once a week, Tuesday or Wednesday are almost certainly going to be your best day. Uh, this is something that it, it seems to be brand agnostic. We tested it across all kinds of different things. Uh, and Tuesday, Thursday in the morning is the best time. So uh, the other thing that's cool about Clavio is you can say, send it at X a.m. in that local time zone. And that time for us that was performing the best is 8 a.m. Um, so it's it's not something that's like you, know, you send it at two o'clock in the morning and by the time they get into work or they open up their inbox, it's like really pushed down. It's like people are kind of waking up around eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, and it's printed close to the top of their inbox when they are first opening up their email for the day. Uh, almost consistently that that's been, that's been the answer. Um, I feel like monthly is way too infrequent. Um, you know, I, I think this is another thing that people often screw up is, you know, they spend all this time and effort getting people on their email list through one of the many ways that we already kind of talked about and other things as well. And then just don't send emails because it's like mm -hmm. the thing they forget. It's similar to like to Amazon. I see this all the time on Amazon of someone spent a year developing a product and then they like softball the images, you know, like they don't, they put up crappy images or crappy copy. It's like, what are you doing? Like you spent all this time and effort, like developing this amazing product, but then you put up these crappy images and that's probably not going to do very well. I mean, same thing with email marketing. You spend all the time and effort getting people on your list. You need to email them frequently to keep them interested and build a relationship with them. Once a month is not nearly enough to, to get people to remember you and to start that interaction. So with that said, then you can go the other way. Like, well, could you do more? Uh, and we started doing two a week or three a week with color it. And we even got to five a week at one point uh, because we realized that if you're doing what I'm talking about with the value stuff, there really is no cap. You, you, you really have a license to email people two, three, four, five days a week if you want. Um, and so for color, we really ended up on a cadence of two to three times a week. Cause I was about where we started seeing diminishing returns on our effort. Cause it is a decent amount of work to set up the emails. And we always had split test subject lines and, you know, it, it's, it, it was a decent amount of work to do. And also you start to run out of ideas of things to, how can we provide more value and get these emails out all the time? Um, but the reality is, is again, is if you're providing value, send out an email as, as often as you possibly want. I mean, it's uh, as long as your open rates are staying strong, keep an eye on your metrics, open rates, strong, click rates, high, most importantly, spam complaints, low unsubscribes, low, right? If you are getting tons of spam complaints and unsubscribes, you're doing something wrong. You need to change your strategy and, and come up with something, either make it a double opt-in and make it so people that are on the list really want to be there or change your messaging to be something that's something that they don't want to unsubscribe from. Like they're voting by doing that, right? Like never think all oh, these you know, people get like, they always like blame the other person. Blame yourself. You can do a better job and send out better emails that people don't want to unsubscribe from and don't hit the spam complaint button on, right? I mean, it's 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 up to you to, to do that. There's, there's always going to be the outlier. You're always going to get someone that's going to do it. But when you start seeing those percentages creep up, then then it's on you. Yeah. yeah. Just a, a quick follow up to that, Mike, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but one of the things I noticed from all the email uh, newsletters I would send out, the, the people, as long as your content was good, uh, putting that in mind before I say this, uh, the people that unsubscribe were probably the people that probably weren't going to buy from you or take an action uh, right. downloading, uh, downloadable or whatever it was anyways. So obviously it's okay. Don't feel weird when you start losing people and going, oh my God, I'm losing sales. You're not really losing sales and you're using losing people that probably weren't going to buy or take action on, on something you were offering. So uh, I, I want to pivot a little bit over to external traffic. Uh, and, and you could obviously, you know, integrate a lot of this email marketing is external traffic, driving external traffic. But, uh, you know, what kind of other external traffic have you seen work uh, besides email marketing that maybe for Amazon sellers or just e-commerce sellers in general, if they have a Shopify store, I know there's a lot of them out there, Mike, but what, what ones have you seen that have been effective? Yeah. I mean, I've been an SEO guy since 2004. I mean, again, 20 years coming up, it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, and it's the one thing that's another constant that just seems to continuously work. Now I, I do, you know, unlike email where I see, uh, three, five years out, you know, timeline that that's staying around. Like I just don't see email going off my phone. You know, it's like, it's a built-in app on the phone. It's a built-in app, uh, basically on every computer. It's the way we're all used to communicating with each other. 
I do think that it, at some point in the future that will change, but you know, who, who knows SEO on the other hand is about to be disrupted, like clearly with, with AI stuff and just the way that things are going to happen. And so, you know, I'm just, it's one of the reasons why we actually just sold this site. Cause I'm just like, you know what, let's, I'm kind of in this whole, like, let's take chips off the table mode for a lot of the things that we're doing for, for this reason. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know. I mean, I don't actually, it's not that I, I think there's a hundred percent chance that something's going to, to change so drastically that it becomes worthless or worth less. It's that I've built something that's worth, you know, through multiple, I have multiple brands that are worth seven figures. And so it's just like, you know, it's, it's one thing to like walk in the casino and put a hundred dollars of black and red. It's another thing to like stick a million dollars in black and red, right? I mean, that's kind of the, the calculation I've had to take. And so, you know, we've, we've had a, a lot of luck uh, building up content sites that, that rank for various terms, whether again, it's in e-commerce or it's in a teaching space, doesn't matter. You start building up a site with really great content. It's going to start getting traffic. And then you can start adding your money post, whatever your niche is, uh, you know, the, the very top of funnel, you know, how to prepare for a hurricane probably isn't going to sell a particular product, but like, what are the best tactical gloves as a, for instance, that's going to sell product. Cause it's a very intentional keyword. And so everyone that comes to the site, we're trying to capture that two to 3% of people to get them on our email list. And we'll get into how we use the email list to drive product sales here in just a minute. But on the content part, we also go to rank for these very juicy, very intentional bottom of the funnel. Like I'm ready to make a purchase. I just want someone to kind of push me over the finish line search terms uh, and, and then send that traffic off to Amazon and, and get those sales. And that external traffic, I believe, is worth significantly more than a sale generated directly from the Amazon platform. And there, there is no, you know, you, you'll never know because this stuff's all black box. But again, I've been selling on Amazon since 2015. And so it's past anecdotal at this point. I, I see just a couple of sales a day, like literally just one, two, three sales per day from a content site coming external traffic, producing sales worth way more than any other games that people play in the black hat space. Uh, you know, and I, and I just, I don't have to worry about waking up one morning and finding that dreadful, your account has been banned email from Amazon because what I'm doing is not black hat in any way, shape or form. Right. And so we've had a lot of success with this strategy. Uh, and same thing again with, with information through something like Ecom crew. Um, you know, we rank for all kinds of various top of funnel stuff of how do you, you know, sending your FBA shipments to, you know, what are the FBA fees now or, uh, you know, whatever the, the stuff might be. But then there's also very intentional, terms of people who are like looking for help or coaching or whatever it might be. And those people are much more likely to, to convert into customers. And so you got to be thinking about the whole thing, you know, similar to email, like most of the stuff that we have on all of these sites, whether it's e-commerce or coaching is value add free value add content, kind of similar to what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, like get doesn't like make any money off of uh, us talking about email marketing, but like, because you're listening and getting free value about email marketing, you're hearing the name over and over and over again. And eventually you're going to wake up one day and realize, holy crap, Amazon is stealing tons of money from me. And I need Gita to like, get my money back. Like it's rightfully my money. And so it's just a matter of repetition and, and, and giving value and doing the right things over a long period of time, like really hits that home. Right. And so that that's, really the strategy, whether it's email, whether it's search, whether it's our podcast, you know, whatever it might be, it's just being selfless and really trying to help people give them value and let the rest come. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. That's uh, that goes back to, I mean, I I've said this on other podcasts, you know, I had an entire YouTube channel that was giving out free DIYs fixing your iPhone. And of course my website was on there and people would come and buy parts. Uh, but there was plenty of people that used the information for free, but it was value add, right? I was giving out free information without, of course I'd plug, you know, the website and everything, but it didn't mean they had to. And that's the same what we try to do with, you know, obviously Sellernomics that we're here to, you know, help you learn and get information from us. And, you know, whether you want to take action and join something or, or get on board, that's fine. But, uh, you know, it's more about giving out content and providing great free information, which, Mike is here doing. So it's, it's absolutely great. Uh, Lisa, did you have something you wanted to also add in? 
I, I think, you know, when we talk about external traffic, it's interesting to me that you haven't brought up like social or influencers yet. And I'm wondering if that's something that you leverage or if you see working, because that's such a big conversation for, you know, especially Amazon. I feel like for Amazon sellers, you know, TikTok, you know, yeah. I, I, TikTok made me buy it. I found it on TikTok. Mm. You yeah. know, I, what, what's your perspective on that? Yeah. I mean, I, I love this question and I want to go right back to what I was just talking about earlier is that every brand and every product needs to be evaluated differently. Differently. You know, people hear someone being successful on TikTok and they stop everything they're doing. They go off and start making TikTok ads with no thought put into, will this actually work in a TikTok environment? Mm -hmm. um, so let's use some examples. Like I mentioned treadmill.com, which we used to own. We we're selling $2,000 pieces of fitness equipment. Good luck selling, you know, getting someone to spontaneously, like all of a sudden decide to buy a $2,000 treadmill on, on TikTok, especially if it isn't like some revolutionary newfound treadmill. Like we were just selling Proform and NordaTrack and, you know, these name brands, 0% chance. Like don't even bother going to waste your time. Other things that we sell today, like ice wraps, we sell, you know, hot and cold packs. No one's going to like have a TikTok video like, oh my God, I put liquid in the freezer and it got cold. You know, it's like that is not going to sell on TikTok, but, you know, a coloring book would do very well on there or uh, we have some stuffed animals that are very cute. Um, and, and uh, you know, I, I know uh, Woobles, uh, which is one of the speakers at e-commerce fuel this year. They've done really well with TikTok. My friend Isaac uh, sells these uh, mini katan swords on uh, all through all through TikTok ads. I have a friend that uh, has cosmetics uh, for acne does incredible uh, on, on social media. And so I think, again, just think this through. Is it the type of spontaneous product where someone is, you know, sitting on the couch, like eating their ice cream, look, you know, kind of in this attention deficit world, they're watching television, eating their ice cream, they got music on in the background and they're flipping through TikTok. Is your product type of thing that's going to stop with all these things that they're doing, focus their attention long enough to either get their email address or get them to just buy your product. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you truly believe in your heart that the answer to that is yes, then go do social media. If you're realistic about the situation and the answer is no, then don't waste your time on social media. It's it's a it's a complete waste of time. Um, now there's like another subset of social uh, that I would put YouTube in. YouTube is like a little bit expanded from that whole thought process because. YouTube's a little bit longer format. You can get a YouTube influencer to talk about your product at a time that someone is in need of it, right? Because YouTube is a search platform. Someone's yeah. typed in the YouTube, like something that they're looking for help for. I mean, obviously there's like the shorts and there's discovery and there, some people get down a YouTube rabbit hole, but like there's a another subset of YouTube where someone's typing in what are the best tactical gloves or how do I build a shelter or, you know, whatever it might be. And they're looking for help for something in that moment. Uh, and they're and, and they're probably going to buy a product as a part of that decision making process, or they're or them getting help, similar to what Rob was just saying with the iPhone uh, parts, right? And so if you sell iPhone parts and, and you you know get an influencer on YouTube to now make you a, a video that that helps with that problem and also kind of sells that part, dead on awesome strategy. Like we've had lots of really good luck with that. Um, I mean, in fact, we've had a lot of really good luck with it, and then we take our best relationships with those creators, those YouTube creators and, and leverage them to do even more for us down the road. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like if they're, 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 already, they're, they're already really good at what they do. And so you can get them to make other video content for you. You can get them to make video content that could be your video ad on Amazon. You can get them to make video content that can be somewhere else on your website. That's like a video that's embedded in a blog post to help it rank better. You can then use that in your email marketing to then send people to that blog post or to that video and get them to watch that video. So like we always try to like leverage things and make it a whole ecosystem. So we're not having to repeat every effort all the time. We're like taking effort A and making product or, or, or producing a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things are with it or whatever. Right. And yeah. um, because some of this stuff is, is time consuming or costly. But yeah, I mean, I think that social media and or YouTube has a, a place for a lot of brands, um, but it also was a complete waste of time for others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really good point. I, I, I think you're right that people see it, it is a big mistake. They see that somebody else got success and they just like dive headfirst into yeah. it. It's 
it just doesn't make sense. Um, Mike, we're going to take one more quick break and then I want to hear more about Ecom Crew and all the wonderful things that you guys are doing there. So we'll be back in just a second. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. All right, you guys, be sure to head over to gatita.com forward slash sellernomics for that first 400 in FBA reimbursements free. We are back with Mike Jackness and now pivoting from email marketing and external traffic over to Ecom Crew. So Mike, tell us about Ecom Crew. Yeah, it's uh, something we started in, I mean, I always forget this. I think it was 2015-ish. <laughs> um, with, <laughs> with really, ago. it was a long time ago. I'm getting old. It's crazy. Like it's, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, humbling, uh, like realizing all of a sudden that you're getting older. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I had a background in, in content marketing. I mean, that was what I just, when I quit my job in 2004, uh, that's what we did. You know, we were just basically SEO and content marketing people, uh, at affiliate marketers. And did somewhere along the way I got into e-commerce and, uh, I don't know, like, I guess I just had a hole in my heart or somewhere. Like I just wasn't doing that still. And I, I kind of missed it in some way. I, I also started just to kind of realize that, uh, what I was doing in e-commerce was a different approach than a lot of the other people that were my peers, right? I, I didn't think what I was doing was special in any way. Um, but what I realized was that, you know, I, I was like a marketer first, like a digital marketer type guy coming into e-commerce with like zero product ability whatsoever. Like, I mean, and, and this is where my disadvantage is, but you know, when I was, when I was in like e-commerce fuel, I'm surrounded by all these amazing product people. Like they're just and and, and they become very successful at selling their products, but uh, to them, the tech part of it is like really, really hard. Um, and so I started documenting what we were up to with modifying our checkout for big commerce, for instance, at the time, or doing email marketing or the way that we were doing ads and some of our flows and people really took a big interest in this. And so we started doing the blog. Um, and then we also launched the podcast and I was just like, I'm going to do 100 of these episodes, no matter what, no matter how painful it is. I want to see what happens when we get to episode 100. Um, but now we're at episode like 500 and something and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's been going on for a while. So it's been, it's been a fun ride. And, um, you know, for me on a personal level, like the thing that's been really cool about it is like, I've got to meet a bunch of really awesome people and, uh, and I can get just about anybody to return my phone calls. Like that's a, you know, powerful thing in business mm -hmm. and, a, and a very handy thing when you inevitably like find yourself, uh, shipwreck somewhere. Like, I mean, there's always something that comes bugaboo that comes up. Uh, and you know, I'm very thankful if not for ecom crew, uh, you know, I just had a situation uh, with Amazon where I could not for the life of me get through their support hell, uh, to get this problem fixed. And, and one of the people that I know from the industry, I won't mention because I, uh, I'll be kind, but like, uh, if, it, if not for him, I, I think that we would still be screwed, you know? And so like, I, mm. I, I find that like, it, it kind of just comes full circle you know, that's what I get out of it. And in return, you know, it's an interesting, uh, interesting world. Unlike the affiliate marketing world that I was in and e-commerce, you know, I can help other people without it uh, hurting me in any way, you know, in affiliate marketing, it was, if you help someone else, they're coming after the exact same search term. Like everybody wanted to rank. I was in the online poker space. So everybody wanted to rank number one for online poker. It's like, why would you go help somebody? You know, cause it was just, it was like so super hyper competitive, but like, yeah. I don't know anyone else that's like really trying to rank for tactical gloves or those other. And if there is like, there's going to be other people selling them anyway. And so it just, it's such a huge sea out there. Uh, and it's, it's cool. It's been, it's been a great experience for me. Amazing. Amazing. And if folks want to learn more, where can they do so? And they can find the podcast and, and the blog here as well. Yeah. It's just Ecom Crew everywhere. E-C-O-M-C-R-E-W. So ecomcrew.com for all the free blog content, Ecom Crew on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast uh, <laughs> for, for the podcast um, and all the socials is Ecom Crew as well. And yeah, like I said, I mean, most everything that we do is free content, free content, value add, value add. We do have uh, a premium subscription model where eventually some very small percentage, because you know it's a, it's an expensive uh, premium package, uh, you know, uh, people eventually end up there and uh, and make it worthwhile for us to run ecom crew. But you know, we're we're the worst salespeople ever, uh, and very low pressure, so we never really <laughs> never do really do any sales. Yeah, yeah totally. he head over there and sign up for your new for the newsletter. Sign up for the newsletter. We're just talking about free yeah. free information, free content. So you know, go go check out what Mike's uh, the newsletter know, is. I mean, I I don't write it, so I can I can uh, I I am biased, but I don't write it. <laughs> uh, that's Dave. I have a partner that does the the written stuff. I mean, it's really good. 
it gets like 45% open rates, very low on subscriber rate. A lot of our emails get featured in other publications, like all the time, even ones that typically charge to, to get placement. Mm -hmm. And it's just more of a lesson over and over trying to hammer home, like high quality, actual value add content is the thing that people want to consume. Like, I think that people look forward to reading our emails, uh, you know, because like just the stats are so high and that isn't just e-com crew, but all the other things that I just mentioned. Right. And so if you're going to embark on this journey of, of going off and doing email marketing, cause Mike Jackness was talking about email marketing, don't softball it. You got to like sit down and like put a lot of effort into it, write really good emails, be really intentional about your subject lines and testing those really intentional about the content you're putting in the email and thinking about it is, as if you're the person on the other end of this email and would you want to read this and if and make that answer yes then you're doing the right things yeah amazing yeah absolutely uh mike i, I want to do this we've never done this before but we're going to do a little bonus here okay uh, reason i bring this up is because uh, mike did have he sent over kind of a little thing a outline of things he wanted to talk about and i think this is something that's not covered a lot it probably could do a whole nother episode on it but Mike, cover a little bit for us about kind of like that work-life balance. You've been doing this a long time. Uh, you just talked about you just sold another business like a day or so ago. Yeah. And you got e-com crew. You got all these things going on. Uh, talk a little bit about kind of what your day like and how do you balance that work-life balance? I mean, it's not talked about a lot, but tell us how do you handle it? Yeah. You're, you're, first of all, you're right in the, in the fact that I could do a whole episode on this. Um, It'd be hard to, to just boil it down to just a few minutes, but I'll, I'll do my best. It, it, the uh, there was there was a really profound moment in time that uh, Steve Chu from my wife Clear Job, Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout, and uh, Scott Volker uh, from Now Brand Creators, he rebranded, and I were doing this thing called Five Minute Pitch, and um, we were filming the finale. We were sitting, we rented an Airbnb. And we were like in between like day one and two, and we're just sitting around drinking a couple of beers, talking amongst ourselves as entrepreneurs, kind of just spitball and stuff. And Steve brings up this thing called the four burner theory, which I had never heard of. And he's like, and basically a theory is you have, you know, these four burners, you have health, family, friends, and work, right? And, you know, the, the, the theory is either, you know, you can only have a hundred percent, right? Just like in anything in life. So if you're going to be really successful, like if you kind of have to turn up the work burner to 50%, 75%, and the other ones have to suffer. I mean, this is just how, how things are in life. And, you know, I have been going through over a decade of having this, this work burner at 60 to 80, maybe 90%, you know, mm -hmm. just like all I really thought about, um, you know, I grew up in a family where, you know, work was always the Trump card. It was like, Oh, we got, you know, cause my family was also entrepreneurs and had, they still have a business. Um, and so that's just kind of like how I grew up and like work was always like this badge of honor of like, I'm going to go work harder. Um, but, you know, over time and, and really that hearing that Ford Burner theory thing uh, was like that moment of like, holy crap. Like, I mean, it, I think you, you might be explained something 20 different times in your life and just dismiss it. And if something is explained to you or, or mentioned to you at the right moment in time where you're willing to accept it and, and change, then it has a bigger impact. And that's where I was at that time. You know, there's probably several people out there listening. They're like, oh, I can do another thing and another thing. And, and that's certainly where I was at that time. But now I've just really come to realize that that. Uh, doesn't lead to any success at all. If people, you know, perceive that you're doing many things or that you're working very hard as success. Um, but, you know, the reality is, is that uh, you can be way happier and way more productive if you try to produce some balance in your life. And, and certainly, uh, you know, I'm happier than I've been in a very, very long time. I mean, we have a very good balanced life. I mean, we go out and like Vegas has been awesome. I and mean, we're out seeing a show four or five nights a week. Um, and going out with friends and playing games or going and doing trivia night or going out to, to all the amazing food options here. Uh, we travel quite a bit more. And when I travel, I leave my laptop either completely at home or never turn it on. Uh, just it's there just in case of emergency. And so it's like a completely different person. Like, I mean, I, I feel like uh, literally a completely different human being than I was 10 years ago when it comes to this. And, and really that four burner theory conversations what sparked it all. Um, you know, and I, I thought about it for, for several weeks, like it just kind of was like gnawing at me and gnawing at me. And, and then I went home and kind of wrote an outline of like how I wanted to, to change things. And I, and I realized that, you know, we all get ourselves in these positions where you can't just flick a switch and change everything overnight. Right. So it was just like, you can't just get rid of everything and get down to one thing or have less things. And so 
I was like, okay, well, I have to do this first and then I'm going to work on this and then I'm going to sell this and then I'm going to do this. And we're pretty close to the tail end of that now. And, you know, life is, is pretty cool. Nice. Amazing. Nice. I, I appreciate that. that. That four burner theory. I'm going to have to definitely uh, talk to Steve about that when I see him because uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm kind of getting to that point, right? There's, you need a balance. So yeah. a very cool. It's just, uh, cool. it's tough because like the, the, you know, for me, I think entrepreneurship is, is addictive. Like just as addictive as any drug, you know, it's, you got to come up to this conclusion of it's just as bad as being an alcoholic or a heroin user or, you know, on meth or opiates or whatever, like the, the, the desire to do this stuff is, is just as strong. But the problem is that if you do any of the things I just mentioned, society looks down upon you. It's like, oh, that guy's a loser for being an alcoholic or for being a, a drug user, not with any completely discounting how they might've got in that position or all the other things that kind of go into it. Um, but usually, you know, it's, it's looked down upon, not agreeing with it again. Like I'm saying, just, that's just kind of how society is. However, with entrepreneurship, it's always looked up upon, right? So like they're feeding you more. It's like, oh, you're you know, successful. Congratulations. You know, you go into these conferences and start speaking and everybody's like, you know, puffing up your ego with it. And it just makes it worse and worse and worse because you, you know, it, it is, it is definitely an addiction, not for everybody. Like I look at someone, like you just mentioned, Steve, he's like the opposite of this. Like there's different classes of entrepreneurs. He wrote a book about family first and really is great with work-life balance has always been that way. Like we've always been really good friends, but totally opposite business operator type people. Like the way that we go about the way that we do things has been very, very different, but there's also lots of people that I know uh, that are just like me that get the thrill off of starting something new, but never really finishing it or having their hands in like 20 different things and having things be chaotic all the time and, and just working more hours because they've got themselves into in too deep. And uh, there is a way out. Um, and if you set your mind to it, if you want to, you have to, you have to want to do it just like anything else, but I think it can be done. Agreed. You have to want it. Awesome. Mike, thank you so much for sharing so much knowledge and so much of your time with us today. Really appreciate it and and loved recording this episode. Like Rob said at the yeah. beginning, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. I, uh, I enjoy talking with both of you as well. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. And thank you for everybody who tuned in today. If you liked what you heard, give us a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, be sure to subscribe to the show, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for joining us this week on the Sellernomics Podcast. Special thanks to our sponsor, Gatita. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash Sellernomics. Be sure to join us again next week for more great tips on how to grow your business. And thanks again for listening.